Jake here with a video featuring a tank that I know that I have never featured on the channel before, but it is the M4 Lozas. It's basically a Russian E8 for all intents and purposes, and it plays mostly the same way, although I do have to say it feels more sluggish. I would have to actually go and check the stats in, uh, let's say, tanks.gg and compare them, but in in the game, it just feels a little more sluggish overall. E8 feels very agile, and that's a tank I've already three marked in the past and enjoyed quite a lot. I actually was running a, above a 60% win rate in E8, and I think it's far better than what people give it credit for. But I snagged the Lozas when it was on sale for, I think, only like $12, and it's a solid vehicle. But it's been a little cursed for me. I haven't had great games, and I've had a horrible win rate in it to start with. I don't know if... if I think everybody has at least one tank when they get it. You just can't seem to win no matter what. And I had never had the, the big game that I normally expect myself to be able to pull out of a mid-tier tank. But this, this was that. It was a, a nice game overall. And as you see... I do like to take an aggressive position here on Abbey. I used to go for the middle a lot, but everybody expects that. And my team already has that covered. So what's more important, I think, was getting down below. Being in here provides a lot of hard cover for you to use. And as you've seen, my teammate just got taken out. The issue with the middle is that people know to expect it. You... You will get shot at, you will get spotted, you will be focused on. Here, yeah, the, the weapon is kind of letting me down a little bit, but the uh, rapid fire makes it where a miss or a bounce isn't really that critical. You have the opportunity to follow it up so fast that it's easy just to keep laying fire down. And I'm actually being very, very risky here, but again... Even though I say this is a little more sluggish feeling than the regular E8, it's still a pretty agile on its tracks tank. The uh, Traverse is pretty good, and while it's not the fastest top speed wise, it is actually able to get around fairly well. And that was a case of the D-Max must have been sitting very close to where the Hellcat was getting spotted, and he was already pre-aimed there. So I'm going to suspect I was hitting him blindly, and he knew to expect me to be there. And when the T-67 pushed up, he spotted me, and the D-Max was already waiting. Because otherwise, I don't believe the D-Max just snapped a shot off in that direction that quickly. But the D-Max is basically the stirrer Emil of this tier, so i got to be careful. I don't want to take another hit from him. That's, that is a 300 average damage gun, and I do not have the hit points to spare after that. But specifically getting hit in the engine like that is why I run an automatic fire extinguisher. I try to stock up on them when there's sales. They are worth their weight in gold because the automatic extinguisher means it's one more thing I don't have to worry about during battle. It lowers your chance of fire and it automatically puts it out. One thing I highly, highly recommend using. I don't ever run food on anything. I'll always have an automatic extinguisher. And I, I honestly think that's that's the smarter overall way to play. Personal choice, though. Now, we've lost the East. I don't know what the SU-100 is doing. He somehow managed to get himself on that little island over there at A9, but he's completely and totally ineffective. He obviously wasn't killed, so they bypassed him entirely. But because they were able to bypass him, that that leaves that tank destroyer, which is very powerful for the tier, useless. So now we have multiple, multiple uh, vehicles from the enemy team pushing in. And it looks almost like our west until that point. I honestly had thought that the M6 was going to pull it out and kill the Hellcat in Cromwell. Because that's a very capable tier 6 heavy. Speaking of tier 6 heavies, 
we have an ARL44 presenting itself. At first, I just wanted to do the spotting, but that's not gonna that's not gonna be the case here. I'm gonna have to deal the damage. So I have him spotted. They know I'm over here now. Now our T1, who is still hanging out in the middle, was able to finish him, but he's sitting on low enough health. I am assuming their artillery is going to get him because that is not an artillery safe position. Now I'm, I'm moving to try to get to a different position so that I'm not that easy to counter. Say, such as this one. Because it looks like the P-43 was actually looking at my last known position. And his armor is just good enough to stop my regular shells. Because this doesn't have the highest penetration. It only has 128. It's more about the rate of fire, honestly, with any of the 76mm armed American vehicles. Which, despite the country that this represents, it is an American built vehicle. There is the Hellcat gone, which frees up our KV-85 and our T-1 Heavy. Because they were basically being perma-spotted. And with a nice shot by our Hellcat, P-43 is gone. Okay, so now the issue in the east is resolved. So now we have to deal with T-67. Somebody's clicking over to the west. But T-67, the previous D-Max, and there's a Valiant. Of course, the artillery is always there, but the Valiant never having been spotted tells me he's probably at his base. T-67, I had assumed he was going to be all the way to the, the west, but he's actually moving in the open, which is highly unusual. I'm positioned to prevent the D-Max from having shots on me, and all I have to worry about is is there artillery a highly mobile player or is he still sitting back at the base if he's at the back of the base I'm free I'm free to sit here just fine but now I have to give my teammates a chance to spot so obviously my position is known to all of the enemies that are still alive Cromwell spots the D-Max and now it's feast time he backs into cover which means I am not going to get hit but I'm able to spot that artillery. I do run optics. And I guess I run a TNT charged shell because that was a nice explosion. So time to push in. We know the D-Max is up there and the Valiant had to be. And of course there he is. You'll find a lot of Valiant players do this. They sit at base because the thing's so slow. But there's no need. It's actually more than capable of getting around. And a lot of Valiant players shoot full premium. No need for that either, but that's that's the typical. And here comes the D-Max just going full on. I guess he just figured it's a loss. He was just going to try to take out the T-1 Heavy. But, hey, free damage. I am trying to track the Valiant, and I managed to get it. So now he's locked in place, and this is absolutely a win. Because as soon as the Cromwell gets around, he's going to be able to finish him off, even if I don't get the kill. And now it's just a battle of high DPM little pea shooters between me and the Valiant. But with the Hellcat and the Cromwell coming behind, he's he's dead. It's just whoever gets the last shot in. And turns out the Hellcat gets him. But showcase the DPM and the overall solidness of the M4 Loza. It's basically an E8 with Russian camouflage. But hope you enjoyed this ace and nice fun little game in mid-tier on Abbey. This is Mongoose Jake. Same thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.